Okay, so I'd like to talk about one of the um, problems that we didn't get to in class uh, that I'd wanted you to look at, which was to take the um, function for the transverse wave y um, xt is equal to um, some constant times the wave speed times the time, I think it was, all over um, what was it? x squared minus v squared t squared. Was that, was that correct? I think that was correct. Um, and show that it was, one, I wanted you to show, well actually I guess first I wanted you to um, draw it. So we wanted to sketch it out, get an idea of what it, uh, what it is, sketch the wave. And um, two, we wanted to um, show it's part of the wave equation. So it solves the wave equation. Right? And, um, okay, let's see. Uh, all right, that looks a little bit better. And then three, the part that I didn't have you do in any of the problems on Wednesday was um, break it into two parts. And those parts would be, what would those parts be? Um, F of X minus VT. So something traveling one way plus um, X plus VT, which is traveling the opposite direction. Okay. Um, part of the reason why I wanted to look at this particular um, this particular function is because it actually shows you something that's traveling in both um, directions and an interesting effect that happens. Um, and the interesting effect happens uh, very, very soon. All you do is, you know, you draw this thing, put a couple of axes out there, and you say, okay, time is t equals zero, right? And if t equals zero, then the actual, um, I should use different sizes and things for axes. I'll try to remember that in the future. Uh, the actual drawing is just a flat line. It's at zero. Um, and if you don't believe me just by me saying, you know, look at t equals zero, it's zero. Um, I don't know what to do about that because uh, the only place where you have a problem is here at x is equal to zero. And it looks like at that point, um, you know, the limits tell you it's probably going to be zero there anyway. So, so we have a nice zero function at t equals zero um, with this the y-axis and this the x-axis. Then we say, okay, let's come around here and take another peek. You know, what is going to happen at t is greater than zero at this some later time, right? Well, What's going to happen is that this thing is going to look something like this on one side, right? And it's going to look exactly the same only in the opposite direction on the other side, all right? So let's thicken that up and so this guy is going along at a speed v in the positive x direction. This is going along at a speed v in the negative x direction. And they just add together on the string, right? They just add together. Uh, and if we'd gone to t is less than, less than zero, uh, which wasn't asked for on the um, problem sheets that I gave you, but is still you know, something that you should be thinking about. What happens at t is equal is less than zero? Well, it looks something like this. 
I don't I don't think it's that sharp actually I think it's rounded but um, so what are going what's going on in each one of these points well I mean you know that when X is very large it's going down to zero uh, you also know that um, this thing is going to change its uh, sign at some point so that's basically all that's going on. I mean, um, not a lot to it. Uh, it's fairly, um, it's fairly pretty. Uh, so that's one. That's that's that first thing. Um, and as you can see, it, oh, I guess at this point you can't see it because I didn't show you. These guys are just V going in there. So before it hits zero, we've got these two waves that are coming together. At zero, they cancel out, cancel each other out everywhere and then they come apart okay so that's really what I what I think is interesting about um, superposition and and about these traveling waves and the exercises that are actually in the book are fairly bland so I, I think this really tells you the sort of thing that you're going to be interested in later on in your career um, two okay so we want to show that it solves the wave equation. Well, I guess the first thing we have to do is know what the wave equation is. Um, I was perfectly happy to go along with um, d squared y. Oh, which one is this? dt squared is equal to v squared d squared y dx squared. Now these are partial derivatives, okay? These aren't regular derivatives, these are partial derivatives. Uh, what's the difference? Um, so a regular derivative has dx dt is equal to v. A partial derivative with respect to x um, a partial derivative of x with respect to t is just zero. It's just some other coordinate, okay? Um, and that's because we're dealing with this thing on a string and these are just two different coordinates that are important in um, the description of the wave um, propagation. So those are some things that we have to think about. Um, but to be honest, when I'm looking at this thing, um, I'm, I'm looking at it and saying that doesn't look like it's going to be a fun thing to take uh, derivatives of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say maybe it's um, nicer if I break it into parts. Right. So um, if I do break it into parts, right, um, I've got this sort of x squared minus v squared over t squared thing in the bottom here, right, squared minus v squared times t squared. Um, that's going to, uh, I, there's probably something out in front, but that's going to make me guess that we have something going, uh, going on like 1 over x minus vt plus 1 over x plus vt. Especially because I know I'm going to break these up into the two parts there. Um, and I've got some constant b times vt. This b doesn't show up anywhere over there, so I'm going to say that that uh, comes out and I don't really have to worry about him. Um, and in fact, I think I'll divide that by 4 and I'm going to bet that that's going to end up something like that. Um, and that's because... Um, Actually, it's going to be 2. I was thinking of squaring stuff. You don't have to square stuff. But if you um, add these together to get that, right, then you have uh, over here x plus vt uh, minus x minus vt, right, um, all over this x squared minus v squared t squared, right? So that's going to be equal to um, 
2 VT over X squared minus V squared T squared. So we need to divide this by 2 and multiply by B and that gives us what we want over here. Alright, so that gives us um, that gives us uh, which one is this? This one's F, right? And this one here is going to be G. So we're good with that, right? We're good with that too. We're cruising. We're doing. We're doing a great, great job. So now this thing, it's a lot easier to um, differentiate. I just have to. I just have to differentiate x once here, x once there, v blah blah blah. Over here I've got a whole bunch of things. I've got a product rule, well, I guess a quotient rule if you like to do quotient rules. Um, but a product rule and you've got a um, chain rule over here. Here you've got a chain rule but it's one of my favorites so it's not a major issue. Um, so we've got d squared du um, t squared with respect to y of this um, thing is d dt um, squaring those things b over 2 times 1 over blah plus 1 over blah where I've got blah all the way down here so I'm not worried about it at this point um, so I can bring the b over 2 out right um, and then I just take the derivatives of each one of these. So d dt uh, x minus vt to the minus 1 plus d dt x plus vt to the minus 1. Um, and I, I, oh, okay, I better put these back on there. All right. So the first one of those derivatives um, is going to give us a minus and a minus, so we get a, a V. Let's do it. This X minus VT squared times V. Um, now we've got a minus and a plus, so minus DDT X plus VT squared um, under V and we just have to go ahead and do it again we're not really worried about that so we're going to get a minus 2 and um, we're going to be able to pull out get a V from that and a V from there so we get um, uh, minus 2 a minus so we're going to end up being able to pull out a 2v squared over there. Um, so we have 1 over x minus uh, vt cubed plus 1 over x minus vt cubed. Right. And we can rationalize that all we want, which is. Uh, uh, what? BV squared times 1 over X minus VT cubed plus 1 over X, that's a plus, plus VT cubed. Okay. And everything's looking okay for all that. Um. So let's check the x-coordinate. Um, d squared y dx squared is equal to, um, we can skip over to this one without any problem, b over 2, d squared dx squared x minus vt to the minus 1 plus d squared dx squared x plus vt to the minus 1, right? And these are all the same derivatives, only instead of taking the derivative here, we're taking the derivative there, right? So we just don't get any of the v's, 
and we don't get both of the minus signs. We don't get both of the we don't get both of the minus signs. The minus sign that turned this negative and then turned it back to a positive. So we still end up with positives. Everything's hunky dory, and we have uh, b times one minus x over v t cubed, right? And we're going to add in one over x plus vt cubed, all right, which is equal to, um, if I multiply by v here, v squared here and divide by v squared, right? Is that the way to do it? Yeah. Yeah, so if I do that, I get one over v squared, d squared y, dt squared, and basically that's this equation here. So we're done. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow.